today is day four, the micro soldering training workshop, and we are working on FPC connectors, LCD connectors, and this one is for the Nintendo Switch, 56 pins. We went over how to desolder that connector. If you look here, we have a lot of plastic connectors right next to it, so we learned how to heat up from the bottom, how to safely remove the connector and solder another one. The connector is 56 pins, and that's what the students are doing right now. We're gonna check on Ed here. Did you already remove the connector? Yes, put the new one. soldering the new one. Align that connector as much as possible and do not touch it after you align it. And heat up from the bottom. Make sure it's centered. And then what's gonna happen is when you apply hot air from the bottom, surface tension is gonna grab it and align it properly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Applying hot air from the bottom. We see flux bubbling. Very nice. It's settled in place. Let go. Rotate. Just take on the board holder and now rotate that board in a way where we can check on the pins. Wow, look at this. Look at those pins. Now, what I want you to do is check on every pin, make sure the pins are solid. If you grab a tweezer, I want you to check on the pins right now. One by one, right? Yes. Solid. Ed, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. Not even a single pin loose. That looks amazing. You did an awesome job. Thank you, Alex. Awesome job. Thank you. Look at the alignment on this connector. Should I try it again? Oh. No, we're gonna go over a different ah. connector. Okay. Yeah. Angel, the alignment on this is perfect. Now I wanna check the joints and see how they look like. Wow. Better than factory, man. Look at this. Look at this. Not even a single loose pin. Next, we're going to be working on the SD connector on a Nintendo Switch. And this connector is tiny. Small. It looks big under the microscope, but that connector is tiny. We're going to use the same technique where we heat up from the bottom. We cannot heat up from the top because if we do, we're going to end up burning that plastic connector and we're going to end up burning the neighboring plastic connectors as well. So we're going to use the same technique as replacing this LCD connector. We're going to heat up from the bottom, remove the connector. We're going to add leaded solder, put the connector back on and reflow. Very nice. The connector is soldered on nicely. Okay, so Ed is trying to put the anti glare light on. What you want to do is put down the ring light. You see? Oh, okay. It got rid of the glare. Watch. Yeah. You see with the ring light on, off, the glare is totally gone because of the anti glare light. Mm -hmm. So, so the surface tension really works if you patient. That's so what the surface we'll tension is about. I spoke about surface tension yeah. on day one, but now once you put it in practice, yeah. you see how, how much it helps. Um, I'm honestly amazed at how fast you guys are learning. Thanks to you, Alex. Thanks really, you. I mentioned something one time. You pay attention, you listen, and then you apply. Here we are working on another chip. 
Now I told Angel what you can do is you can secure one of the pins or two of the pins on the chip. Uh -huh. Like you can solder right here. Uh -huh. You can solder the pin right here and then apply hot air. That way the chip is secured on the board before applying hot air. If you do not do that, you can still do it, but you see what's gonna happen? That mm -hmm. chip is gonna shift. You wanna apply the tip from the side of the pin. That way you have more surface area from the tip. Are you missing anything? <laughs> the chip or wire. Oh, the wire? Maybe yeah. I took your wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me check. Here. I have some thin pins. No, here, here. Take this. I think that's one of the then we're going to go over pad strips. Okay? So Angel was able to precisely grind those microscopic traces. And when I say microscopic, those traces are microscopic. The wire itself is 0 0.1 millimeters. And the trace is actually smaller than the 0 0.1 millimeter. Or almost the same. Whatever tools are being used here to do this job is from our shop and sold at our shop including original Amtec flux, the soldering station that Angel is using, the grinding pan, the wire, the Northridge fix brush, UV light. When you have the right tools you do a good job. Fume extractor, look at the fume extractor. Look at how the hose extends all the way to the board. So Angel does not need to smell all those fumes. So far we worked on Nintendo Switch motherboards. We have one here, we have one here. We worked on a Minimax tuner motherboard, Xbox Series X motherboard. All practical stuff, stuff that you would do in real life. We do not live in a fantasy world and we do not do non-practical stuff. Everything is practical. You leave the class and you will be able to go out there and do the job. This is a micro soldering class. It's not a troubleshooting class, but we're going to jump over to a troubleshooting class right after this one. And for any one of you who are interested, you can reach out. Maybe you can be part of that class. We have a PlayStation motherboard here with rib traces. Ed will be working on this one. Take a lot of practice, you are working in a very tight area. I mean, look at this. You barely have any room to breathe here. But I want you to get used to this. So he's using a combination of the anti-glare light and the ring light so he can get the image that he wants. Everything is nice and clear. Okay, so Ed did a really good job so far. He connected the wire to the capacitor here, running all the way down here. Now he's gonna add UV mask, cure that UV mask. Looks like Angel is working on a customer's board. What's the ticket number on there? Uh, 1130. 113, that's a very old board because right now we are in the 20,000, the ticket number. So that's a very old board. And it was deemed a no fix because look at how many missing traces we have on the board. And that's not the only issue. We have a lot of missing filters. We have a lot of missing components. And that board was deemed a no fix due to non-practical repair. If somebody wants to spend 10 hours working on that board, by all means, but it's not a practical repair. And it was deemed a no fix. Customer did not want the console back. We kept it. And now Angel is practicing on that board. The customer attempted to replace the HDMI connector on this board and he ripped 90% of the traces. The only traces left on the board are the ground traces. You can tell. Ground, 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 ground. They all connect with this one big pad. And everything else you have to restore. Oh, we need to be dried up. Well, alcohol stuff. is going to dry by itself. This is 99% isopropyl, but just tap over it, get rid of as much residue of alcohol or flux as possible. And then apply UV mask. See how Ed has UV mask on the blade. Now he only taps on UV and then he applies over the wire. That's the easiest way to apply solder mask in a tight area or anywhere. We just finished our micro soldering training workshop. Today was the last day. Students already left. 
and we're going to continue with another workshop which will be next week students requested that we offer this workshop where we show how we troubleshoot and fix devices we've been in this business for 10 years i know what devices we get in most popular fixes how to fix them how to use a multimeter voltage injection tool thermal camera what to look for when you are diagnosing a circuit board everything that you need to know from a to z on how to troubleshoot and fix devices if you are interested you can reach out and we'll see if we have any room for you in the workshop if you want to sign up for a micro soldering course also contact us and we'll check our schedule accordingly i'm trying to have no more than four or five people in the class i do not want to have 20 students in the class where i'm not going to be able to focus on everyone having four or five students in the class or less means more one-on-one -on -one focus everything i know about soldering was shared with the students all the knowledge i accumulated the past 10 years i shared in six days no wasting time no going in circles no loops no nonsense stuff straight to the point we worked on practical stuff such as an xbox motherboard a nintendo switch motherboard how to solder a qfn chip how to solder a bga chip how to rebuild a bga chip how to work with lcd connectors how to work with micro usb connectors usb c connectors the microscope soldering station hot air station the tip size heat transfer surface tension we covered every single thing about micro soldering students left confident and they can tackle any job that you throw at them we do not do non-practical stuff but we do practical stuff that actually matters if that student got a ps5 that turns off after one second we want to show them what to look for and how to tackle and fix that console if the student got a laptop that does not power on we need to show that student how to tackle and fix that laptop what to look for what to measure how to find a short circuit how to tackle a problem everything will be taught in the repair shop just like we did with the micro soldering training course if you are interested in attending any one of the courses whether it's the micro soldering course a to z or the repair course a to z reach out and we may still have room for you having said all that today we got some packages from amazon and the first envelope i opened from amazon i see this chocolate box i know i did not order a chocolate box from amazon and i do not see any gift receipt inside the package but i know it must be coming from somebody because it says on the package alex northwich fix usually we get the packages labeled as northwich fix and not alex so somebody must have sent this package whoever mailed this chocolate box thank you very much i really appreciate it that means a lot i hope you enjoyed the video let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you on the next one